Alright, so today I am going to be rehandling some axes. I work at a throwing range and every once in a while they break. They get a lot of abuse. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to chop these handles off and then put brand new ones in. So the first thing to do is get rid of the old handle. To do that, just going to set them in here and then just with a saw slice them off actually it's easier and probably safer to flip them upside like that because now this is a little bit a little bit straighter you don't have to deal with this curve be careful clamping things in the vise like this. I should have like a piece of leather or something in there because you can mar this metal. But it's fine for now. clean cut then moving on we got to drill it give me a second I'm gonna reset okay and now for drilling them out uh, we got to get this wedge there's two wedges there's a wooden wedge you can't really see it, it sort of blends in on this one and there's this steel wedge uh, this is a circular wedge I don't like these I'm gonna talk about that more later when we wedge the handle uh, so basically, with this drill press, I'm going to drill a hole here, here, I'm going to flip it over and go straight down the middle to try to get uh, this wood out. Most of the time, this is tremendously annoying, uh, but we'll hope that it goes a little bit better today. Because of the axe curving like this, having something to set it on to give you a firm base. Very good idea. An important thing to note when you're drilling these from the top, the way axes are designed, this eye narrows as it goes to the bottom. This side is smaller than this side. So make sure you don't drill too close to the edge because then you're going to mess up the inside of that eye with the drill bit. And just go slow. You're, uh, and also, as you can see, I'm not drilling all the way through. I'm just drilling down into here. <laughs> the two top ones I'm gonna to try to get right uh right smack where that wedge is we'll hope for the best Now we hope that that loosened it up a little bit. Now we got to try to pound it out of there. All right, and as I said, the next step is going to be beating out this piece of wood. Um, it can be, as I mentioned, extremely frustrating, but we're going to do our best. All 
make sure it's in there nice and tight. Again, I should have something to protect it. I've just got a piece of steel and hopefully this drilled through to where that will happen. Just got the wedge out. Perfect. And now, hopefully, we can begin convincing the wood out. But it is in fact starting to work so that's fine we just put it back in really should have something protecting the steel but oh well there it goes again but as you can tell, it's getting further and further out. So we just keep on doing that. There it goes. Now you're all ready for the new handle over there. All right, I'm over here. I got my anvil now. It's a little out of frame because I wanted to show this. This is the handle that I'm going to be putting in the, the new one. This is from, I found this, I Googled replacement handles. The handles that I'm using, uh, the axes here are cold steel, uh, and cold steel does not sell replacement handles for this axe. But I found a company that does sell a replacement handle for an identical axe by cold steel, and so they fit in here quite nicely. I'll link to their uh, site down the bottom. Uh, so this part is real easy because this handle is made to fit in this axe you may just make sure that it's facing the right direction and then it literally just slides right on now you got to make sure that it seats all the way down easiest way to do that which is why i'm at the anvil is you just take it and you pound it a few times take a look you can see it's seated nicely it's even kind of chewing into the hand the wood a little bit there that's fine that's not really going to damage it damage it and then the next thing to do there's a slit right here and this big slit is where i mentioned the wood wedge goes when you order the handles they come with a wedge they're a little oversized which is fine you just kind of i just use my fingernail most of the time mark it there and i usually have a knife with me but instead i'll just use the axe and just uh, put it there and then just give it a little splitzy goes in there i'm gonna dab a little wood glue and then glue this in set it all the way down don't go pounding away at it because you can break this but just seat it all the way down in there got some wood glue i don't go just squeezing it in there all willy-nilly but you know use enough The majority of what holds the handle onto the axe is just friction. 
nothing wrong with having a little extra assurance that it ain't gonna move. And then just tap that in. Eventually it stops going. Boom. Now we, now we sit there, we wait for the glue to cure. I'm gonna come back, slice all that off again. Well, not again, I haven't done it for the first time yet. You get what I mean. Okay, it's a couple hours later and the glue has had time to cure. Now, we just nip this top piece off. Lovely. Now we're going to put the metal wedge in. So now this is nice and flat. We're going to take a metal wedge. We've got them over here in a bag. I like the flat ones. As I mentioned earlier, the round ones. Um, I don't like using them. You can't really drive them. You can drive them in, but then if the top comes loose, you can't really drive them deeper or like make or tighten it up at all. So I like the flat ones. The, you can buy these on Amazon. Uh, just search ax wedges. I put it more or less right there in the middle and then just tap it in. the ball end just to kind of drive it just a little bit more but that's it now that's in there this is not going to move ever again that's how you do it uh, next step is going to be uh, sharpening I'm gonna try to get rid of some of these grooves and give it a nice fresh edge As you might be able to see, this one's got some damage right in here, a little bit there. I'm not going to grind it down too much to really, really fix those, but I'm basically just going to run the grinder along it to just give it a nice cleaned up edge. And it'll take this down a little bit, uh, but not too much. I like going on the top of the grinder like this. Uh, you should probably wear gloves because uh, it gets pretty hot, throws a lot of sparks, but I'll grind it just along like this. I'll usually hit it twice on one side, flip it over, and then twice on that side, uh, being careful to make sure that everything stays nice in there. Um, where are my glasses? Quick pause while I find safety glasses. Found them. Safety first. Don't spend, don't hover in one spot too long. If this heats up, uh, you ruin the temper of the steel. So make sure that you keep it moving. Now take it to the belt grinder to just kind of clean it up a little. Now 
unfortunately I do not have a proper knife maker's belt grinder yet. I'm working on that, but this, it's a belt sander. Belt sanders are belt sanders. Uh, I'm going to be doing it on the round right here just because this is really long and broad and I don't feel like having it rip out of my hands. So I'm gonna do it right here. Just make sure I keep it moving so that it doesn't grind in a dip or whatever you wanna call it right there. Just keep it moving do it two or three times on each side and that just kind of keeps uh that just kind of cleans it up a little bit um this is not necessary i just do it anyway because why not go too far and do too much Uh, by the way, this is an 80 grit belt um, and same idea. Keep it moving. Don't leave it in one spot because this is a lot of friction and it'll heat it up. I'm going to change this to a 120 and then we'll be totally done. There it is, sharper than it really needs to be for an axe, but that's how you do it. Uh, thanks for watching, and all that like and subscribe and whatever nonsense. Do that stuff. Thanks, guys.